I was born in Israel, came to New York City when I was around four years old. I come from a rather extreme, ultra-Orthodox community, a very particular, I would say, political sect that are very anti-Zionist. I had no uh, contact to the outside world. I was kind of raised in a bubble within New York City. My name is Sarah Arenthal, and I'm a multimedia artist. I paint, I sculpt, I use uh, mixed media, I um, do performance art, and um, I also do a lot of uh, public art. I used to uh, collect materials that you know I could paint on and uh, bring them home to paint. And uh, one day I saw this really cool window pane in Manhattan in Chinatown. And I wanted to take it, but it was too heavy. I suddenly had this idea. I'm like, I have some Sharpies in my bag. And I, I decided to draw on it and leave it. And, and uh, then I heard back from someone the next day that someone took it. Um, which made me really happy. And then it kind of like changed how I see things on the street. Ever since I moved to this neighborhood, I've been seeing a lot more uh, potential canvases. So it kind of became a really big part of my daily routine. People have been collecting my work from the streets, uh, which is really cool. Uh, it actually drives me to do it even more because I'm realizing that I'm saving trash in a way. Things that no one else would want. Things I see like on the street sometimes for weeks and then it just stays there, and the moment I put my art on it, it, it goes, so, so I'm happy to give it a new life. The face that I, uh, do, that I do a lot, especially on the streets, is uh, what I like to call a subconscious self-portrait. It's just a, an inner presentation of myself and at different stages of my life. I was drawing a lot of eyes, and eventually it started getting more features, and it went from just being eyes to then eyes, nose, and a mouth, to then getting a head, to then getting hair, to then getting a neck, to then getting sure you know to then getting a full body even sometimes so when i was 17 my family moved back to israel and they took me with them not by choice they, they had a job for me there and they kind of like tried to set me up um, in an arranged marriage when i was around 17 and a half they 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 uh, proposed uh, this man to me they wanted me to go meet him and i uh, tried to say no um, but they basically didn't give me an option, so I found myself having to run away from home uh, the night before I was supposed to meet the guy. I realized that I wasn't, I haven't really discovered my true self and uh, knew that I wasn't really happy living that religious life, and so I decided to uh, leave religion altogether, um, and I did that by joining the Israeli military. Looking back, I don't think I'd I do that again, but to be honest with you, I feel like the military saved my life. Um, it gave me structure and it took care of me for two years. Eventually, um, saved up some money and came back to New York um, around 2001. I spent the like first 10 years of that um, just working like nine to five, trying to take care of myself, um, you know, paying my rent, paying my bills. Somewhere in my heart, I always felt this. This, like I had this like fantasy of, of living my life as an artist. I just wanted to be normal, and so my social life was very different. It was like you know going out, doing things that like mainstream people kind of do, just because I was like learning about the world. And then I had this like breaking point basically where I lost a job. I was working in a jewelry company, and um, I decided to give up um, my apartment and um, put everything in storage. And I. I uh, took off to travel and I ended up like on this two-year backpacking trip um, in Southeast Asia. Uh, most of it spent in India. While I was traveling, I suddenly found myself with a lot of free time and started drawing a lot every day and, and, and I guess my craft started developing. I said to myself, this is what's making me happy. I'm, I'm, I felt like I was letting go of a lot of things from the past and um, starting to heal. Um, through making art and um, I knew that now now or never kind of like I'm just gonna go all in And I started you know painting a lot and, and put my work out there and I got into a show started meeting other artists and and networking and and met my first collector Which also gave me a lot of confidence that I can sell my work and, and it's been about you know probably around six years since I started the studio art is definitely where I put a lot of my focus and energy on. I feel like it's the work that is going to live for a very long time, a lot more personal work. 
I'm working on a series where um, I'm trying to portray certain memories from my upbringing. So this painting that I'm working on, which is um, part of the new series that I'm doing for my Five Miles show, um, coming up, opening um, March 9th. This one um, talks about a memory about the schooling I received um, growing up uh, within my community. There's surveillance on them. My class kept getting into trouble, so the school decided they need to put a camera on us and, um, and uh, to, to see who's the one causing the problems. <laughs> Um, but to me, it also represents constant control, constant eyes on every move. I feel like by creating these paintings, I am letting go of these um, hardships. My biggest challenges are definitely financial. I made a decision about five and a half years ago to pursue art full time and to not really work um, outside of that. Um, it hasn't always worked <laughs> very well. Um, I had to take in some jobs here and there, and I worked as an art model, I worked as a dog walker. I, I would say housing has been my biggest issue. I'm able to live here um, because I, I, I work for my friend whose house this is um, in exchange for a room in this house and also um, the use of our shared space here as my studio. Um, so it's a barter arrangement. And actually, in four months from now, our lease is over and I have like no clue where I'm going to be. It's very interesting because I grew up in Brooklyn, but in a whole different world within Brooklyn. And when I left my community and, and went to Israel and then came back, I wanted nothing to do with Brooklyn. I went to live in Queens. I started then, you know, meeting artists from Brooklyn and, you know, over those years and, um, started like saying, oh, there's a whole different Brooklyn, like now I want to live in Brooklyn again. For You know, I saw it from a whole different perspective and I really like Brooklyn because there's so many creative people around and so many interesting things to do and see and um, it's just full of life and art. I hope to be able to continue living in Brooklyn. My goal as an artist is to continue making art for the rest of my life. It would be great if I can sell more art so that I can pay my bills without stress but it's just, you know, the goal is just to keep working, to keep creating every day, to do public art in other countries. Because actually I realized that even people that come from completely different backgrounds from me have somehow felt a personal connection. But interestingly enough, I actually realized that it helps other people too.